welcome to Living Martial Arts with Master Ray Gale, aka the Dark Master. Living Martial Arts discuss and examines the everyday exercise, philosophy, and lifestyle of the martial arts enthusiast. The host talks about his own training, past and present, and he also interviews many martial artists to discover how they continue to live their own martial arts journey. Tune in for top tips on how to get the best out of your martial art. Or perhaps you're thinking of starting a martial art. This podcast offers you an easy way to dip your toe in. Sign up for the newsletter at livingmartialarts.com and get regular updates and training tips direct to your inbox. Follow the Dark Master on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Living Martial Arts. Hi, we're back again with the Living Martial Arts podcast, part two of our fantastic chat uh, with uh, Mr. Ralph Minnett, who has uh, experience in WTF and ITF. And on the last podcast, we finished really with um, his sort of rise uh, into the into the TAGB as uh, one of their um, uh, top fighters. Uh, and obviously, I was part of that team. And obviously, Mastro was part of that team as well. So uh, nice to see you again, guys. How are you doing? Yeah, great. It was great to catch up before. Brilliant. Excellent, excellent. Well, we were mentioning, uh, Ralph, you were mentioning before about um, obviously your experiences in the, uh, in the in the WTF, and then you, I think the last point we were talking about, you know, being part of the the TAGB team, which I think in those days, um, you know, <laughs> one of the, the mottos of the TAGB team in those days was we'd fight anybody, any rules. Yeah. Um, and, and we yeah. cer- and we certainly did, and um, yeah. it was it was a privilege to be uh, part of that team. Um, you know, some of the guys that uh, uh, that were in that team, I was actually in awe of. <laughs> I was in awe of them. Yeah, totally. Of their, their ability, people like Tony Saul, Kenny Walton, Kim Stones, you know yourself, yeah, totally. Dorian Byton, uh, Mastro. You know, such a such strength in depth. But um, I know, perhaps you know, both of you can tell us. A, uh, the audience a bit more about those days and why the team um, did so well. I mean, I, I think that um, it was really interesting that, and and and, and you, when you look back at it, it is it is more phenomenal than it was at the time. At the time, yes. we were just doing it, and we all used to turn up, and everybody, you know, if, if there was four people in a semi final. The four people in the semi-final, every single person, every division could have won it. Mm. Whereas, you know, these days you look at the tournament and there's a, there's a standout person and that standout person is causing havoc. But but in those days, four people could win. Mm. And, and, and I suppose my time in the TGB as a fighter, and that was from Dave making that call, I look at my time as international fighter rather than just fighting and learning. Yeah. As an international fighter, it's probably 88 through to 95. That seven-year period. And in that seven-year period, every year, there was a new single or two people in the four that could win every tournament. Yes. And technically, t- today, bear in mind, we travelled the world and we fought anybody at any rules, any time. You know, I, I even remember before the Iraq war, we were training to go to the Iraq to train WTF, fighting a WTF open tournament, weren't we? Yeah, you know, yeah. we, Dave would just say, look, if we're going to talk about being the best in a country where, you know, you go to freestyle and some of those freestyle fighters were the most unbelievable. And I think that's interesting when you look at, you look at the, the CVs of the current WTF Olympic squad. And so many of those people come from kickboxing and freestyle and stuff like that, not taekwondo. And it reminds you that you've got some unbelievable talent and we just took anybody on. Yeah. 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 And it it was just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think think a lot lot happened uh, middle to late 80s because you you had that, that sort of... You know the TJ squad was strong, and also you had the the groundbreaking competitions of Clash of the Titans, yeah. which uh, you know we yes. we were um, putting it on the line really, yeah, um, against um, 
you know, <laughs> against some really, really good, talented dead wrong. fighters. Dead wrong. That, that was incredible as well. So yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't Jen, Jen, if you want to comment, comment on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, we used to, I used to, you know, one week I would be fighting you, and the next tournament it would be, well, I've got to get past one in the semi final. The next person tournament it'd be Albers and William Taylor or Ian Worrell or you know, yeah. so you were and every person you fought had such intriguing styles. And that was tough. And then the next week you'd be driving up to Huddersfield to fight, you know, Graham Abdullah or you know, yeah. people like that. And and it was just it was just unbelievable that you were having to be so creative with a set of skills. You had a set of tools yeah. and you just had to have an open mind. And I don't think you see that so much now because people are so regimented in what they do. But in those days, we were taught to be able to fight anybody at any time. And, and that was all about, you know, Dave Oliver. And, and, you know, squad training was simply the hardest thing yeah. I've ever done in my life. Mm. You know, even to I today... Agree. And and all the training and all the training regimes that I try and do myself, nothing compared to how hard that was. And it mm. was just ridiculous. And and that created the most tough group of people with skill that you could ever create because it was just so hard. Yeah. And the fitness regime was so tough, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, we I remember um the first time I went. In, uh, to squad and uh, Ray would say you know you've got to get yourself fit for this and I remember I did I went out running and did a lot of work with Ray and my instructors and training at the schools that we run really worked hard every day of the week and I remember for about the first three or four times I went up there I just couldn't cope with how tough it was yeah. it was brutal and, and this is just the fitness and then you yeah. have to put the gloves on and you yeah. have you know, you mentioned Paul Tarn earlier. No, yeah. I mean, Paul Tarn, to anyone who knew at the time, this guy would, uh, if he threw a turning kick at you, you might have to get out of the way or you'd get, you know, you'd probably get your arm broken. Or, and well. that's even me being a heavyweight. And he'd Dead throw well. a reverse punch at you and he'd hit you midsection, he'd knock you down. Me and Dead well. being Dead 20 well. stone, he'd knock me over. And you think, yeah. wow. And he's a lightweight. Yeah. And he wasn't not. even an out-and-out winner. He was very good. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't. And you're that thinking... Is- so you go up and you look up and down the lines of, you know, yeah. you fight everybody you think there's no easy fights here. No. And and this is coming off the back of an hour's fitness session. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have a small yeah. break, you'd be sparring for, I don't yeah. know, an hour. And then you stop again and you do another fitness session. Yeah. And, and I remember, <laughs> I, me- I remember, Rolf, um, I was seeing a young lady at the time up in Nottingham and, and uh, I used to meet up with you and we, dro- we drove down a couple of times together. Yeah. And I remember she came along once and she was very into her sport as well. And she said she couldn't believe what we were doing. She just <laughs> yeah. couldn't believe it. She said, no interest in martial arts, no interest in you know fitness as such. But she, I remember she watched from the balcony, there was a window, um, I think at Hinkley where we were in the main hall there. And sometimes you go in a different hall as well, wouldn't it? Yes, oh, yeah. a big, yeah. a big green floor. That's right, I remember, yeah. I remember she was looking through the window, looking at me like gobsmacked <laughs> and saying, wow. And I remember we, we would cut, I would come back to training in Bristol and Bath and the areas that we run schools at. And um, again, we in the West of England, we had some very good um, fighters, but the fitness took you to another level. It was just, and you could was, take a shot as well. Yeah, you don't get hit in a combat sport, but if you got hit, you yeah. just take it and carry on. Yeah. Whereas before, it would shock you and go, you know, my yeah. says, everyone's got a plan, yeah. so they get punched on the nose. But when you're super fit and you're fighting yeah. week in, week out, what an advantage that was. It, and as it, you it, said, any competition you go to, yeah. it could be again, yeah. full contact, or it could yeah. be, you know, the FSKs or whatever it was. And the rules would change every time. That's I think right. the, the, one, one of the highlights, um, not myself and... Ray really liked was going to the Jersey International or the oh, teams gosh, are from yeah. Holland. Yeah, yeah. Karate, yeah. you know, and what have you, and Wacko and all the other groups were there. And we had three teams and they came first, second, and third. He says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were fighting national, you know, <laughs> Wadaroo karate teams and national, you know, again, whatever it was. It was just incredible. So far. And again, 
as you alluded to earlier, the the the, the fun in the crack that in the yeah, sunshine just, to all it that. Was just totally, yeah. and, and because everybody was so grounded. Yeah, you know, there was obviously all lots superstars, of superstars. Superstars. Yeah, but seems grounded. to own right. Yeah, but just grounded because you yeah. couldn't be a superstar because you get ripped out of you. Absolutely well. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And you know, I, I I I used to dream. Dave used to do this thing where you used to do sprints and then you do five of five exercises, then you do 10, 15, go up the pyramid to 25. Right. Yeah. And in between you'd be sprinting and doing piggybacks and then do the next yeah. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and everybody that did the count had to come in the center. Correct. Yeah. And the, the the pinnacle was being picked Correct. to come in the center to do 25 burpees. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and my yeah. dream was the day when Dave, yeah. and, he, and you'd kill yourself to be that yeah. fit, that yeah. he'd yeah. look at you and think, yeah, I'm going to call him in for the 25. And he, he never you, picked you know, me. He'd, he'd be Jackson, <laughs> Jackson White and Elvis Parsley, <laughs> Kenny yeah. Walton, and I'd be going, oh, no. And he'd work all week. Yeah, just yeah, to yeah. be able to be picked for the hardest thing that was in the training. Yeah. And yeah. that was the mentality burpees. that he created. Yeah. Yeah. It was just it, unbelievable. It, it was great times because, um, you know, not, not, not only that, but it, it, for me at the time, it, it was really strange because when I went away with the team, you know, and you guys, I, I didn't I didn't feel the pressure of winning because I think well if, if I didn't do so well somebody yeah. somebody was going to be coming up to, you know next one on yeah. maybe maybe in Tony Saul or something yeah. like that who who you knew were going you know was going to win a fight they, yeah they, they weren't going to lose it and I think I think that was the thing I think it, we all fought for each other yeah um, you know not not as individuals we did fight as a team um, it was a team yeah and, and for me you know no no com- you cannot be for me and me and Mark are going to gloat now. And the the ninety one world champs. Oh yeah, yeah. Where where it then became weights. Who and won that had, team, Rob? Do you remember? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so it was me, <laughs> you, um, Mark Ware, um, Dorian, Dorian. Um, there was a guy from not Neil, Rob. Neil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Neil. Oh, Neil, Neil Williams. Neil Williams. Neil Williams. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil yeah, Williams. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, rag bag team, really. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you think that we the, were the, the, we were the B team, weren't we? Yeah, the, the, the A team was um, Kenny Walton, uh, Tony Saul, but Lee, he's not Lee, injured. Lee Childs, yeah, Tony yeah. Sewell, Jackson White, yeah, uh, Tony Saul, Kim. You know that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kenny Walton, Kim Stones. Yeah. Think, Jesus, yeah. these guys were just cleaning people up, weren't they? Yeah, and and we were just quietly going through the rounds, weren't we? Then we read them in the semi-finals. Yeah. And th- that was, you know, when you you look at great teams who perform as a team and everything you just said, right, you yeah. know, thinking you've got to get a draw, you've got to get a win because that yeah. tactically puts the next person in a place. Yeah, and yeah. then we just know the point where we're going to take it. And for yeah. us to beat the 80 in the yeah, semis yeah. was just unbelievable. Bragging it, 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 was, bragging it, was, it was a great competition. I mean, it was quite sad for me because I really wanted to be in that team. But I, I knew... From, from, from my point of view, that I wasn't up to it because um, because actually it was about ninety one that I was considering retiring because yeah. I had had young I had a five year old and a one year old at the time <laughs> yeah. uh, and um, I, I was really sort of struggling with my training um, and it, it was my my last sort of throw of the dice really ninety one yeah. although I competed a little bit after that really that was the that was the end of it but uh, what what was good about that competition was um i had some of my fighters that actually did really yes. really, really well yeah. Yeah. and um I, I i for me that that was it was almost sort of like passing the baton to those guys yeah. you know yeah. and uh, saying yeah. well you know, i've had my time it's your time yeah that was it and and, and really that for us mm. it's it's the people that we take on a journey yeah and whatever they achieve you know the people who achieve great success fantastic People who just become good, good people because yeah. of their time they spend with you. That's for mm-hmm. me the satisfaction, more as more right. satisfaction than the days when we were competing. You're absolutely right, mate. Correct. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, 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 definitely. Mm-hmm. I, I also think that um, you know, c- coming back to uh, things like the, the the clash of the titans um, and going into that that sort of um, environment, I think a lot of those um, fighters. Um, people like um, you know Apara and you know Bob Sykes at the time. Yeah, yeah. After that, they had massive respect for us because I think that 
you know, they were thinking, well, you know, it's a Taekwondo guys, we'll sort them out. Yes. And, and, and once we got in there, they had a big fight on their hands. <laughs> Dead yeah, we saw them, eh? Dead yeah. wrong. Dead yeah. wrong. Dead I, I, wrong. Me- I remember fighting um, uh, Jeff Bullock. And, yeah, and he came up to me at the beginning of the fight, and he whispered in my ear something that wasn't wasn't particularly nice. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> and actually, it was quite good because it spurred me into action, um, and I won that fight against him. And I think he was oh, quite, massively. He, he, he wasn't he, even close. He was quite sh- he was quite shocked that I could take take some punches. He was really yeah. shocked. Well, he's, he's, he's British four contact champion. You dropped dropped an axe kick flush on his face. Said, that's right. Flush yeah. on his face. Yeah. Oh my god. And he, he was the com- he was the MC as well and he's given everyone <laughs> stick, myself included. You know, <laughs> they were gonna kill us and what have you. And Ray went in and just it, wiped the floor with him. And, and, and it, the got, best- it got to the end and it was just that big fight between you mm. and Bob's brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. the room used to erupt, oh didn't it? It was yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think the biggest accolade that, that Ray could ever get was if you watch that fight where he's doing a jumping back kick on yeah. Jeff Fuller, yeah. 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 bad boy reputation, MC yeah. at the event, yeah. uh, British kickboxing champion. And Ray's doing jumping back kicks on him, flush yeah. axe kick in the face and <laughs> skips away. Is you look in the background and Dave Oliver is jumping and punching yeah. the air and just going <laughs> crazy. We're all going nuts. And that must have sucked all the life out of their team. Yeah, because totally. They just went into, you know, totally. Like, totally. You know, they, and we, we tried to hold each other together, look after each other. They were doing lots of you know, yeah. like rip hands to the groin and elbows to the face <laughs> and head butts and biting. We just stuck to our plan and yeah, won the event. It was brilliant. Yeah, yeah it was. It, it, it was also yeah. not. A, I, I also I also think that once again everybody was shouting for each other. It was it was a, it was a t- it was a team effort. And I also I also like to say as well. And you know, if 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 he ever listens to this, uh, Master Oliver, what a fantastic um, person he was. Oh because god, yeah. I, I remember yeah. he had mm-hmm. he had more faith in me than I had in myself. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And yeah. A, a member of fighting Arthur O'Loughlin and he said, No, you'll be fine, you won't touch you. Yeah. And, and, and I thought I thought he was gonna knock me out. I yeah. honestly thought well, he I, could. Yeah. He could he could knock you out, but he never touched you, did he? Yeah, but I think I think that was the other thing. Having uh, Dave Oliver as a coach and having you know his, his belief in you, uh, mm, yeah. you know, that, that gave you a few points to start with. So, we yeah, also think, don't forget we also had a huge following in there as well i yes. mean we thought we've gone up there with with our team yeah and that venue's quite big but i yeah. remember with the tgb and probably we didn't do the last one um but with the tgb support as it was when we were fighting yeah it was sort of you know Monst- yeah. In- incredible yeah yeah lovely but, but, absolutely but, lovely. you know in life see i i i, I draw so many parallels to great people in business. You know, I was watching um, Bezos jump on the stage and, you know, talk about, you know, what's going on in the world of Tesla. And, mm-hmm. you know, and we were talking earlier about uh, the three kings. Yeah. You know, and, you know, great motivators. There is mm-hmm. nobody I've ever met in any walk of life who has that skill of motivation the day volume. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. with every people. When people talk about uh Fergie and it, it draws so many parallels with somebody yeah. who would put his arm around some people. Mm. But I remember <laughs> when we, we, we went to Switzerland, we fought in Switzerland, mm. and the decider of one of our fights was destruction. And they had that guy Brindley from Nuneaton. Oh yeah. yeah. And, and he had passed to do, away, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and he had to he had to do the fourth his punch. Yeah, and he, the fourth is punch and broke his hand. That's yeah. correct. That, no, that was in Switzerland. That was that was Utrecht. Utrecht, yeah, broke his hand. I won the I won yeah. the side kick, and yeah. he was and doing then, the hand technique. And he did the hand he technique. He said, "Oh, but... you're doing the destruction." I'm going, yeah. "You sure, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> you sure?" No, you're doing it. I thought, yeah. well, wow. straight away you think, "Yeah, he's got you know." And, yeah, today, break... yeah. Tell a story about Steve Brindley. That was that was unbelievable. Yeah, and it? he he breaks his hand. Yeah, with all his know, knuckles pushed up to the middle of his hand. All his knuckles are pushed up, his, his bones in his hands are snatched. <laughs> yeah. and I, you know, I'm just thinking, Jesus, and they put ice pack around there, and Dave just ribbed him the whole time. Yeah. Sits over there, <laughs> yeah. you're useless, you know, he yeah. really gave it him. And yeah. Because <laughs> he was his instructor in the club yeah. as well. Yeah, it yeah. was just, it was fantastic. That's and exactly right. I mean, 
I, I, I've got lots of stores like that, you know, where I'm going out to fight and he's saying, like Ray alluded to earlier, that he's the argue you're the best fighter. You've got no problems with this guy. Just move around. Do your stuff. Yeah. You'll be fine. I said, yeah. what's my stuff? What, what stuff am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and I would, I, you know, and he would really boost you up. And then if, and then some, sometimes they go, you. And I can't use the, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> what yeah. you please please what you guys like yeah. idiot you you yeah. get and of course you you'd be dejected but then as yeah. you get up, pushing a bag go oh, come on and you know, yeah come, dead shoot that yeah, fist dead in your face they come on dead and you get up and go yeah. all right let's go again yeah. let's go again yeah great. I mean, and great memories as well I mean they, I remember they said uh, Dave Oliver and Kenny said yeah Og has got a new sponsor and they're putting sponsorship on the bottoms of it. <laughs> bottoms of the soles of his feet because he's always on the canvas <laughs> or you know you know, they call me Rembrandt I said why are you calling me Rembrandt well you spend more time on the canvas than you do on it <laughs> you know and I was winning everything in those days as well you know and thinking hey but it was just say they brought you down to earth that's right super and, 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 but and, when you, know, you were out me, there fighting you had you had total belief in it yourself mm-hmm. in it and the people behind you because everyone's screaming and shouting for you yeah and the, and, and the, the bond and what it did, it created a bond in the team. Yes. And, you know, the, the, no, the way that, for me, the, nothing compared to when they pick, when Dave used to pick the home internationals or the internationals that were at the spa centre. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And we all used to turn up, not knowing we were picked, who was going to be picked, didn't mm-hmm. we? We'd go to the changing rooms mm-hmm. and they'd say, right, um, lightweight, Ron, Ray, you know, he'd pick the people and you didn't think, oh, no, it's not me. You'd just be behind them, wouldn't you? You'd be yeah, behind yeah. them because you were just a good squad. Yeah, good team. Total yeah. bonded squad. And, and that skill, you know, for me, you know, he, he's the godfather of, of the TGB. He's the godfather yeah. of so much of what's happened in martial arts yeah. in, in the UK. Yeah, and, agreed. you know, it, it's just an act, one of those acts that nobody will ever follow because mm-hmm. he's that unique. Yeah. Yeah. But as a motivator, incredible, incredible. Well, well it, it, it's it's very much like as as you mentioned uh, before we went on air. I was talking about the, the program, the Three Kings, about uh, Sir Matt Busby and Shankly, yeah. and yeah. Jock, Jock Steen. And the problem with those people, they're such they're so good at their job and they're so such strong characters. Is who's going to take over afterwards? Yes, yeah. Because it, it's a bit of a poison chalice, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. You know, it is. And, it? I, I think you know Dave Oliver probably suffered a bit of that as well. <laughs> he did, yeah, and you know, and really, Dave picked the best fighter he'd ever had. Yeah. He's the most consistent. Unbe- I mean, people who talk about Kenny Walton, there's a, there's there's a video clip of you might be on it actually, Ray. A video mm-hmm. clip of tra- of of a squad training session yes. in Derby Academy. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah and, it. and it flicks, and it's looking at Kenny Walton working out. Yeah, and yeah. nobody on this planet can do what he was doing. It yeah. was just off the yeah. scale. And yeah. and the, the problem, you know, and I was still in the team when he took over the team. And essentially I had somebody who was one of my best hours alive. But his standards go back to what he was like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, nobody can that's recreate hard, no. the <laughs> standards hard, that yeah. he's got. And that's why yeah. he's so tough. He's yeah, so yeah. tough because the standards that are in his mind that are any good. Oh, it's yeah. numbers, which is just uh, unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. or it's unachievable, actually. I remember, yeah. you know, if you ever took a, a training session, my gosh, he was a uh, superstar, just incredible. wasn't he? Kenny incredible. Ball. Yeah, yeah. Totally incredible. Can, 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 I, can I ask as well? So, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, uh, I, I wanted to, to sort of mention, you know, we're, we're talking about obviously, um, you know, our team and our time in the team, but, um, what what the listeners may not know is that during all this time as well uh, is that you you've actually been a, a martial arts teacher as well, uh, Ralph, and you've you've had your own school, um, which you still have. Yeah. And um, you know, and it, I, I just wonder whether you know when when you're when you're teaching now, do you use the well, I'm sure you must do, but the, you know the, the the skills that you learned from WTF and ITF to combine that to teach your own students. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think um, you know, my teaching, my teaching started when I went on my first, when I got picked for my first international. My first international in WCF mm. was in Northern Cyprus, fighting the Turkish, the Northern Cyprus, and that was where I first came across Hank Mayer internationally because wow, he yeah. was in the 
Dutch team in this tournament. Mm-hmm. And it's the first time I'd ever been on a plane. So I was a kid who grew up in the inner city, single parent family, three brothers. We grew up in the slums of Nottingham. I went to an inner city school. I was never any good at anything. I sort of doing this thing, take one no. And this thing, take one no, I put me on a plane. And as I'm taking off, I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to start teaching, Taekwondo, mm. in the inner city. So I started teaching in the city Taekwondo in 1984, 85, mm. in a youth club in the middle of St. Anne's, if anybody knows Nottingham, which is, you know, the old slums that, that have been rebuilt in the 70s. And I went to the youth club and started teaching the youth club. And the youth club used to be next door, and I used to be in the hall. And I was in the early, mid, early 80s, I was just teaching kids and a few adults. In the days where people talk about, you know, Tigers is the world now. It's a yeah. it's a structured, everybody who does take one knows a kid. But in those days, when I started in, in the eight, in late 70s, 80s, blokes did take one know, kids didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and I started at a youth club and kids used to knock on the door. So I had blokes and then kids used to knock on the door and say, can I do it? And then I used to go to the door and say, look, if you want to come in here, this is what you, and I used to just set the rules. Yeah. And I used to have these kids who would be messing around outside in the youth club. Then at seven o'clock, they'd knock on the door and they'd stand there and wait for me to invite them in. And then I'd invite them in and I'd line them up. And I'd yeah. say, right, these are the rules. And if you don't have the rules, you go. And so I had this regimented take yeah. no structure where I brought them in the lines and I had these inner city kids, many of you were just all single parents. And I ended up becoming effectively the role model parent that yeah, they yeah. turned up at twice a week. Yeah, yeah. And and I started to create like these unbelievable kids. It was just crazy. And every kid fighter I had, I had to do everything. Hmm. So I used to say, right, we're doing a WTF tournament this weekend. And they'd be saying, well, just give me a suit. And I used to turn up. And hmm. we'd go to Manchester to a WTF uh, national tournament. And I'd say, right, you're going to be fighting the black belt division. And there'd be green belts. And I'd put a black belt on them. And they'd go in and just be splashing people. Yeah. And, you know, I just had these kids who I just taught. Foot leg was kick. Make your foot leg work. But you need movement. And as soon as you move, bring everything else in. And where we're using hands, make sure your hands drop off your feet all the time. And, and these kids were just unbelievable. And I had this period between like mid-80s to the early 90s, you know, people like Sarah Lamley, Richard Castillo, Dwayne Castillo, you yeah, know, yeah. they were just off the scale. You know, yeah, they the were. problem I had was that as adults, you churned at 16. Yeah. There wasn't a thing called a cadet. No. But at 14 and 15, my kids were saying, look, I want to fight adults. And I'm saying, no, I can't put you in an adult in a JGB tournament. But in anything else... Freestyle, we'd go to freestyle and they'd just fight lightweight adults. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, and so I created these fighters because of my experience of having to fight anything. I just taught them to fight anything. And so that's kind of the journey that I went on. And, and, and that was a journey that was great through the 80s and the 90s. But as soon as you get into the noughties, you move into a world that's very different. Yes, you do. Yeah. A world where safety yeah. becomes this number one thing through the door. You've yeah. got to think about how your kids get there, how they get home, structure, child yeah. protection, safe, you know, safe, safe, safe martial arts, empowerment. And so the martial arts that you are teaching, you can't bring people in so much, right, you're just going to fight to the death. You can't do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just totally different. But, well, you, know, well, I, you know, it's always been this thing where I've always had a career which is all about property. Yeah. And I've come out of property. And I switch off and I teach martial arts. And I do that yeah. just for the love of getting the best out of people and mm. still do that now. Well, it, well, it's, yeah. it's great. I, I mean, um, a, a sort of a, a parallel story to that was really myself and uh, Mass Row because but I, think, I think we had our schools in the 80s. Very similar to you, we started our first school in 83 in Bath. Yeah. And really, we used to use our students – Aspiring partners. Yes. Um, and that went all the way up. And it culminated in 1991 when our, our bath, well, our wasn't our bath team. It was a, the members from all our schools. We actually won the um, you did. Black Belt Team Championships in, you did. in, in Leamington Spa. 
And I've got to be honest, they were all young kids. Lee Charles, is, yeah. Patrick Osborne, Adam yeah. Woodhouse. They were all in their early 20s. Um, yeah. And they were fearless because we'd spent hours and hours literally kicking them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, if, if, it, if it wasn't me as, as a lightweight, then it was uh, Mark as a heavyweight. Yes, um, yes. So when they went in there, they had so much experience. Yeah, we, we, we taught everything we could have taught them. We taught them. Um, yeah, brilliant. And, and I, I remember that 91 competition, and I, I literally cried because I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe these young kids. <laughs> it, it, it was a bit like the Alex Ferguson story, and say you don't win anything with kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember. I vividly remember that. Yeah, I because we, remember that. Because pe- people questioned him. My, my um, area rep at the time, who was uh, Mike Dew, he he questioned the team because he said, well. You know, is this the best team? I said, yeah, this is the best team. Um, <laughs> and, and he couldn't believe it because they're all myself and, and my master own students. I said, well, <laughs> you know, but they were supposed to be from the southwest of England, but they're actually yeah. just just from three schools, <laughs> really. And that was it. But um, yeah, it, it, great days, great days. And it was so good to see these kids, these youngsters, um, just go in there, no fear, um, you know, and just stand up against really really experienced fighters and hold them yeah. it it's would amazing. be for me it would be great if if there was enough it's difficult now because they get to an age where you can't do that no you know because they've got a cadet division which is keeping them separate from fighting adults and kids that move from cadets and become successful adults are very rare yeah. whereas you're right we were fighting our 14 and 15 year olds they were fighting with us as adults yeah. in training every yeah. week. So yeah. by the time they got to 16, they were two years ahead of kids today. Yes. And that's the difficult I have. You know, you've got you've got kids who are kids for a lot longer than they would have been in the good old days, and they would have developed a lot sooner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it, it is very, 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 very different. I mean, myself and uh Mastro, we we sort of uh we sort of talk about it and the things that you could probably as you say, with, with, with kids and putting them into an environment where, you know, they're going to take a few shots. I mean, you just can't do that anymore. Um, yeah. uh, and they take a lot longer to, uh, to develop yeah. to get that, that real sort Dead of, um, Dead uh, that Dead grit, rock. that grit, I want to call it. I want to call it that yeah. grit, you know, where they can stand up and actually, you know, take a kick or take a punch. Yeah. And that, that's, that's, a, that's more important than the, te- the technical bit's easy. Mm. So you see people are technically fantastically technical, but you just think, the minute they get touched, mm. they get a tickle, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah. listen, while, while, while you're, you're down, I'm going to ask both of you, um, because, you know, we, we've all been in, in Taekwondo for uh, a long time. Uh, and I, I want to ask you, um, and really for our people listening here, is to um, maybe outline some of the, the, the people you think. Um, we've talked about some, we've spoken about some of them. Um, who you think might you admire over the years you know I know Ralph you've talked about some WTF fighters but obviously there are WTF fighters and ITF fighters out there who I think um, you know uh, made a massive influence on my Taekwondo career Um, and you know I still look at them today and think wow you know if I if I hadn't met them if I hadn't trained with them I wouldn't have been the person that I am today so I don't know um, go for it who wants to start I think um, for me, you know, I, I have to applaud the guy that fought for my success in WTF, which was Ray Lightfoot, who yeah. wasn't my instructor. I trained with uh, Tony Vora and um, Dave Hetherington. Mm. And when I started doing ITF and I wanted to, and I got into competing, and because I love competing, I went to Mansfield because Ray Lightfoot was all about competing. And this guy, just said, look, you've got the ability to win anything. And and he taught me to be tough, taught me to use movement, taught me to use power. And he was the guy who I, I, you know, that I credit success in WTF to. Yeah. You know, in, 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 in ITF, in fighting, I say, you know, it's got to start with Dave Oliver because Dave Oliver was the guy that dragged me to Warwick Warwick was where I learned how to really point fight and, and fight front leg fighters. You know, I learned how to use movement and hands at Warwick. That was the place that I learned. And so many of my fighters will credit me dragging them to Warwick on a Friday night as being instrumental 
in their development. And so, you know, Dave Oliver, to me, will stand out as the man yeah. that has been the pioneer. But in, in terms of technical, you know, traditional take on, no, it's Brian Tanger all day long. You know, yeah. he took over from Bob Harvey. You know, he was the guy that just made me take traditional taekwondo seriously. Yeah. You know, he respected yeah. the fact that I fought, he respected the fact that I was in the squad, but he was all about creating good standards in Nottingham that I would be revered for. So, you know, in terms of people that have been, you know, I think inspiring, empowering and motivating, you know, they, they stand out for me. You know, yeah. I yeah. I look at people that I, what I love is admiring people who you admire, who you talk. Yeah, yeah. You know, nobody stands out in that guise more than Gordon Fern. Because yeah. this, yeah, this is the well, guy yeah. who was yeah. an okay fighter mm-hmm. who turned up at my club as an 80 year old and said, look, I wanted to learn to be a top fighter. You know, mm-hmm. I can do it, but I want to learn mm-hmm. to be a top fighter. And I yeah. used to say to him, right, you turn up to mine from Derby. He used to catch buses to come to Nottingham twice a week to train. And then I'd pick him up, take him to squad training, take him to Warwick. And so I did all that. And, you know, and he just soaked it up. And, and I've watched this guy develop to one of the best exponents that TGB's ever had. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a captain for 15 years. He was just the great, one of the greatest competitors and exponents the TGB have had. Then go on to do another totally different sport in his cross-training and all that stuff and his nutrition and his physical development and, you know, and become a professional sportsman, martial artist, instructor and coach. Sure. And so I look at him and, I, and he stands out as, you know, the man who I look up to from being the person I coached. Yeah. 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 Excellent. What about yourself, Master? That was a good, uh, yeah, good list yeah. there. Some big names there. I, I would totally agree agree on um, Dave Oliver, great motivator, um, passion for Taekwondo, above and beyond. Um, our own instructor as well, Mike Ju, great disciplinarian, um, taught us from a young age, great basis to everything that we do today. Uh, from a sporting aspect, I would say that um, Tony saw for me just probably saw I was a heavyweight, but I just saw things that Tony would do that, you know, even lightweights couldn't do. I remember, you know, going to squad training and we had to put the badminton nets away before we could train. And he went up and two footed jumped over a badminton net. Now, <laughs> Even to this day, I'm not sure if that's true. I had a dream about it or not. But I speak to, you know, I speak to Ray and said, no, no, I saw that as well. Yeah. And you think, but that's the Olympic standard where the net, you know, comes yeah. up to, say, my shoulders. He did a two-footed jump. He just jumped over it. <laughs> um, so, and then when he fought, he, he just looked like he was fighting in slow motion. And I yeah. honestly, growing up, so I thought, I'm going to beat this guy. I'm going to bust yeah. him up. <laughs> and yeah. I remember the first couple of times I sparred him. I thought, oh, I'm doing all right here. And you know, I was deluded. He was just <laughs> great. And, and to this day, um, I, I believe I've got a good relationship with him. You know, I think great, great fighter. And then the other heavyweight, obviously, is Hank Mayer. My goodness, you know. Wow. You see videos of him. I fought him at the uh, team tournament uh, in in uh, Warwick. I think it was a blue belt at the time. Yeah. Was I a blue belt at the time? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you were. Um. And I, and I remember thinking, wow, you know, my aggression's going to take me through here. And that was a great learning curve because he pointed me. For a WTF fighter that could, you know, throw kicks and knock you out, yeah, yeah. And the rules in those days, he just yeah. pointed me really well. And I remember yeah. I thought I was winning the fight. I remember I charged him into the crowd once and come back out. And he just did a nice little fairy flick on my face and everyone went crazy. <laughs> and I thought, oh, we haven't done anything. He won the fight with that kick, you know? Yeah. Um, but again, I, I, the, the person that we were so fortunate to meet and really opened up our association in the UK was General Che. And to spend yeah. time with the founder of Taekwondo, yeah, sit yeah. down and listen to what he was saying. And we were with him for a week, yeah. getting breakfast. He would teach us. Um, total inspiration, not only from the martial arts point of view. I mean, sport, sporting achievements, 
Uh, I don't think he was really interested in it, to be honest. Mm. But um, from a technical aspect, the, the history of Taekwondo and yeah. what what he's created and sent around the world, and mm. to listen to him as a human being and tell, telling you his passions um, and what he, what he wants to achieve and the things that he wanted us to achieve. Um, again, a funny little story, Ralph. We, you know, I was in the class, and um, obviously we had to go from hip twist to sine wave, which again is sort of rugby league, rugby union. Yeah. And you know, we really love taekwondo, um, especially at those times. Still fit enough to you know do the kicking and the punching and fitness. And I sort of went up to him and sort of politely said, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this sine wave. You know, how long do you think it would take me to master it? You know, got any words of advice? He said. He just turned and looked at me. He looked me up and down because he's only about five foot two, was he, Ray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Ray, Ray looked huge up against. <laughs> um, and he looked me up and down and said, you, I've watched you. It's going to take you at least 10 years. <laughs> 10 years? <laughs> 10 years? But he's absolutely right. You know, from a technical aspect, you know, ITF is so precise. And I appreciate yeah. that, you know. I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, and I understand it. And, you know, people have got their flavors and their preferences, but um, for us, he treated us very well. Um, very inspirational guy. He was very kind to you as well, Master Girl, wasn't he, when you took your grading? And yeah, asked he... you questions that we've never been asked before at gradings. I mean, he or Cho was inspirational, was he, Rolf? He was, was, yes. Um, and yeah. 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 he asked he questions was. that we'd never, you know, rather than saying, what's your name, Chon G, he would say, what's yeah. your philosophy on Taekwondo? Yeah, that's right. Like, How do you spell it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it was it was incredible. I mean, I would agree with that. It's incredible because uh, you know I was lucky enough to take my sixth degree under General Che that that that, well, that week, and I was practicing my patterns and meaning to my patterns. I was going through. I thought, you know, I was founder of Taekwondo. I cannot let let myself down. I remember after I did my grading, which which was really tough to be honest. I, I struggled with it because I just learned the side way. And I came up to the table and he said, um, he said, right, tell me about your education from age four. <laughs> I said, sorry, sir. He said, education, what school did you go? What 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 exams did you take and whatever? So I was going through, yeah, I went to primary school and I went to aircraft college, aircraft university, engineering, aeronautical. I was telling him all these things. He said, oh, good. He said, uh, you know, you, you should be well qualified to, to lead this organization. I was thinking, wow, it's just, um, and he made me feel really good. Wow. You know, he, he didn't belittle me at all. He just said, you no. know, you no. have to be, and he said to me, you know, if you're going to lead this organization, you have to read philosophy um, and you have to, you know, learn and you have to um, uh, look after people. And he, he was really, really good. So I, I would agree wow. with that. I would agree, agree with that, Mastro. I mean, just from, from my point of view, I, I would say that when I first started Taekwondo, I went to a tournament. The, the person that I saw uh, originally was uh, Master Sergio. And mm, yes. he was my way. And I thought, wow. I, I want to be like this guy. Um, and I started to sort of model myself on him. And as it went through, um, people like Ray Smethers was still sparring in those yeah. days. But I was, yeah. also, I was also impressed with his patterns as well, because I always wanted to do work patterns. But Ray, yeah. Smeth Ray Smethers was great. Um, you know, moving, moving on from there, I consider myself very, very lucky that I had people like uh, Dave Shepherd, Wayne Burnett, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yourself, yourself, Ralph, as yeah. well. Uh, the way that you moved with your WTF and ITF, your movement was actually very, very different from the, most of the fighters at that time as a lightweight. And, and I did watch that quite a lot. Um, uh, Ian Worrell, very, yeah. very, very, very tough. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you hit him and he could hit you back <laughs> twice yeah. as hard. Um, I, I will say Dave Oliver as well, because um, just, the, just the advice he gave me um, yeah. about, um, you know, getting in there and having confidence in myself was, was, was excellent. Um, but I would also say one of the, the people who gave me belief in myself a lot of times was yourself, Mastero. Um, I think I think a lot of the times you had more belief in me than I had in myself. You, you, you used to say to me, oh, I he ain't going to beat you. you. You'll be fine. <laughs> I was thinking, <laughs> are, you, are you sure? <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are many more people that I've forgotten, um, you know, and like all of us now, or all, all, all three of us, what gives me pleasure is seeing my students uh, yeah. get out there uh, and and do it not not just win but but to compete in the right way with the right attitude 
Yeah. Um, and, and if they lose, you know, they come off and say, yeah, I've learned something there. Um, next time I'll go in and I'll do this. So, you know, I think we've all had um, uh, a really good time in Taekwondo. We've, we've developed some some great students. And, um, you know, that's the thing that gives us pleasure now. So, you know, yeah, completely. Completely yeah, agree, with I'll, I'll agree with that. Well, we're, we're sort of coming to the end of the, end of the podcast. Um, I just want to say thank you to both of you for uh, being part of this. Uh, I hope that our audience, I'm sure they will, um, uh, uh, enjoyed this. You know, let, let me know. Put some comments in the, um, in the comments box. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can have another chat in the future. And, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, see, see how it goes. But I, again, just want to thank you so much, Ralph, for uh, your time. Yeah, um, great to come. Oh, you know, you've been a great friend, a great competitor over the years. Um, you know, I think you're quite unique. You know, there's not many people who, who've done as well in, in WTF um, and ITF. Uh, very few and far between. You know, we mm-hmm. mentioned people like Hank Mayer, um, uh, the Tapalatu family, um, you know, uh, done very, very well in both. But um, so, yeah, I think you're you're there with uh, some, some really great. <laughs> yeah, some good people, some good people. But uh, I, I'd, I'd also I'd also add, you know, before we go, that, um, you know, you as in as in most martial artists that we meet up and down the country and throughout the world where we've you know we've been to africa and scandinavia and all these places rolf stands out as a true gentleman he's always been a lovely guy good friend um yeah. and um to to have him on a podcast and hear his stories about his olympic his olympic history and to, and to represent you know great britain and, and northern ireland uh at the olympics <laughs> my gosh you know how cool is that you know i, I hope you still got those um those suits and those trainers those t-shirts yeah, but, uh, i've got it i might grab one i've yeah, got it all me, see if i can nick one and uh <laughs> put it on and pretend i was there one day <laughs> okay excellent well listen we'll see you soon folks thank you very yeah, much yeah, all the best guys. uh take care and um i'll be back soon with another uh living martial arts podcast and some more martial arts stories thank you very much yeah, great thank to you guys Thank you. Welcome to Living Martial Arts with Master Ray Gale, aka the Dark Master. Living Martial Arts discuss and examines the everyday exercise, philosophy, and lifestyle of the martial arts enthusiast. The host talks about his own training, past and present, and he also interviews many martial artists to discover how they continue to live their own martial arts journey. Tune in for top tips on how to get the best out of your martial art. Or perhaps you're thinking of starting a martial art. This podcast offers you an easy way to dip your toe in. Sign up for the newsletter at livingmartialarts.com and get regular updates and training tips direct to your inbox. Follow the Dark Master on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at livingmartialarts.com.